<laughs> I presume that what you do on Sunday morning is to do a what I talk. No, I, 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 I'm very comfortable saying that I preach a sermon on, All right. on Sunday. Give us some idea of the things that you that you preach about. Well, uh, in, a, in a post-Katrina ministry in New Orleans, there's a lot of talking about healing, a lot of talking uh, about recovery, uh, a lot of talk about uh, bringing the community together to, uh, to re-strengthen our families and uh, in our wider city. Uh, there is uh, a lot of urging people to look beyond just themselves and their own problems so that uh, we are lifted beyond just looking at our own concerns. So looking at wider justice, uh, equal housing, uh, the criminal justice system, the lack of mental health facilities in the city post-Katrina, uh, the racial issues that have bubbled even more strongly to the surface post-Katrina. All of these things would be, would be part of a message uh, on, on, on a Sunday morning at First Church. Which would be, not be too different from the same subjects that your parents were involved with. I think that's, <laughs> that's very true, yeah. Well, uh, you've, you've been there at, at, the, at the First Unitarian Church now for a short time. That's right. I've been but, home now for a, a little over a year. This is now my second year serving First Church. Right. And, uh, and I know that not only the churches, but our organization and other organizations lost some of our memberships from Katrina, the people who did not return. Yes, we uh, lost about 50% of our membership in the immediate still, aftermath of Katrina. And have ha, ha, what, how many of them have returned now? Well, you know, Sunday? that's an interesting question. Of the original members, you know, uh, not, not very few have, have returned. Um, of our oldest members, almost none. Uh, very you mean old by their personal age. Yes, by yes. their age. Um, uh, it's it's a it's a joking characteristic of Unitarian churches around the country that that, uh, that they are filled with uh, with gray haired elders. Uh, uh, on Sunday mornings, that it, a minister can look out and see a sea of, of white hair like foam in the congregation. In, which means that in time you may lose your congregation. But uh, in uh, First Church, and, uh, and I suspect that First UU Church is not uncharacteristic of other churches in New Orleans, what happened is, is that many uh, of our wise elders were evacuated after, uh, in, the, in the storm. And in most cases, adult children said, you are not going back there. Have you mm -hmm. lost your mind? And so a lot of our oldest members uh, uh, have, uh, have relocated permanently. Yes, well, they haven't lost their minds, but they may well have lost their home. Right, but it, the, the, no, the, the wanting to come back to New Orleans was the have you lost your mind part. I, I understand that. Uh, we lost uh, a great deal of our young families because because of the disarray of the educational system in New Orleans in the immediate aftermath of Katrina, uh, young families enrolled their children in schools in Dallas, in Houston, in Lafayette, in uh, Atlanta, and, uh, and then decided to stay. That the, uh, in many cases, finding that the school system was so much better. Uh, that it didn't seem right to them, however much they might have wanted to come home, uh, to to take that opportunity away from their children. So, so we lost uh, young families and our elders um, in Katrina. What um, what we're noticing is a rebuilding of the congregation from new people coming to the city, and they also are on two ends of the age spectrum. Uh, we are getting an, an enormous influx of young adults uh, under the age of 35, most of them single and childless, really energized and excited about wanting to help with New Orleans recovery. They are not. They were not New Orleanians. Not New. Or they may have gone to Tulane or Loyola. Yeah. And then graduated and went back home to where they I lived see, but before. But they were civic-minded people who came back to do it. Very idealistic, do. wanting to use their talents in service of the of the city. And then on the other end, we, we're getting these uh, retired baby boomers, who you know their kids are grown, they're empty nesters, they may may have a small, comfortable retirement, and they figure, well, I used to be. 
yes. a lawyer, a librarian, a teacher, a dentist, uh, an electrician, whatever, and they say, well, I could, I could go and help. Absolutely. And so we're, we're seeing an influx of new people on both ends of that well, age continuum. We lost members as a result of Katrina. Uh, many of whom who now live elsewhere remain on our mailing list so they can know what we're doing. Uh, but we have recovered. Our mailing list has increased greatly, replacing the ones we lost and adding new ones. Yeah. And our biggest problem from the, our inception was letting people know that we exist. Mm -hmm. uh, and f I get telephone calls from people who who were so glad to find a secular group who would say, I thought I was the only one. No. no, isn't that funny? You, I, I find new Unitarian Universalists saying that all the time as well. I thought I made up that religion in my head. <laughs> but at least the, you're, you're, the name of your church is known and they, you're in the, in the newspaper. We, are, we have been in New Orleans for over 175 years. So, we are one of the oldest churches in the city. So the problem that we have of letting people know that we exist is is uh, is greater than the one that you would have would because so. your your church is has you know is somewhat known, but uh, in spite of that we we have had increases, and uh, and apparently that is also taking place around the country. There is a and uh, you I'm sure you're familiar with recent bestseller books on the subject of secularism, atheism, and so we feel that. Um, even though we are probably still the, the most maligned uh, minority group in the country, we feel that, that uh, there is beginning to be some acceptance of who we are and what we do. And I obviously see it in youth. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're, we're on somewhat on parallel paths. Well, even though uh, uh, Unitarianism in modern day is uh, is so uh, misunderstood that uh, when presidential candidate Adlai Stevenson was uh, was running, he discreetly began attending an Episcopal church, uh, although he had been Unitarian from childhood. Uh, I think we'll, we'll have another Unitarian president before we have an outright atheist president. Uh, that seems to be the one thing you couldn't possibly tell the public uh, when you were running for office. Well, and, and the polls indicate that. They, you know, they, they would, I think they would vote for a child molester before they would vote I for I think we've for actually an atheist. had <laughs> atheist presidents. Of it's course. just they lied. Well, our early, <laughs> uh, the, you know, our early uh, founders of, this, uh, of, of the country and the writers of the Constitution uh, if not atheists, were agnostic. Or deist. But, but in recent years, uh, you, if you are, you can't acknowledge it. That's right. Now, how do you, your church, or you, or, or your congregation, feel about uh, the, the, the involvement of government and religion, which got greatly exacerbated under the, under the present uh, presidency? Well, I